Hello and welcome everybody to the fundamentals of electrical power systems for biorefinery. Today's course is about the electrical power system. The electrical power system is usually made up of three voltage levels. The lowest one, that is the low voltage, that is the voltage that we use from our households and our working places, is normally 400 volts, 0.4 kilovolts. Then we have the medium voltage range, which is approximately 20 kilovolts. And then we have the extra high voltage and high voltage range, which goes into the hundreds of kilovolts. So this extra high voltage is used for transmission grids and also for the infeed of large, large powers like hydro plants, uh, nuclear plants, and so on. Whereas in the distribution grids, the infeed is mostly done to decentralized generation, just like the biomass energy production. There's a rule of thumb that says kilovolt corresponds to kilometers. So that means if you want to transport electrical energy from A to B over a distance, for example, of 20 kilometers, you need a voltage, a system voltage of 20 kV. If you want to transport it for more than this, for example, for 50 kilometers, you should be above this 20 kV. So the next one is the 110 kV level. By regulation, the voltage levels are divided into these seven classes. The lowest one, the lowest voltage class, is the low voltage consumed at the terminals of the consumer. And the highest one is the transportation grid, which is 400 kV and transports the electricity all over Europe. Decentralized generation, for example, from biomass and bioenergy conversion, is done into the medium and low voltage levels. The structure of a grid is from the most simple one, that is the radial grid, to the most complex one, that is the totally intermeshed grid. Let's start with the radial grid. To transport electricity to all those consumers along, for example, the street, can be done through an arrangement like this. The electricity goes into house A, house B, house C, house D, and so on. But this has a disadvantage. If there is a failure of, for example, a line between these two consumers, then the whole line has to be switched off by protection here. And whatever you try to do is you cannot re-energize these consumers behind the fault point. In order to overcome this difficulty, engineers inserted one more line between the strand A, strand B, for example, here, and another circuit breaker is implemented. So what happens again if this part of the cable connection is faulty? You can energize from the substation to this consumer, and then once you have switched off the faulty part of the system, you can re-energize by closing that circuit breaker and bring the energy from the reverse side to all the other consumers that could not have been supplied in the system of a radial grid. And if you do this for more and more substations like here, then you have a completely meshed grid. Since the ring structure, which is operated as a radial structure, but can be closed up, is the most common one, I will go here into further details. So we have the substation, and that this is the line A, this is the line B, and here we have the coupling switch. So if a fault happens here, you open, you see, at here and at this point, which is done by these load switches. This is the symbol for such a station. The load switches are open, are opened here and there, and this circuit breaker is closed. Then, if in case there are very sensitive consumers, which can be switched off, for example, by a failure of the whole transformer station, there is no power in the grid and it cannot be brought back by closing and opening switches, then you need another independent generator, which could be a gen decentralized generator, for example, operated by biogas. So as can be seen here, in case of a complete failure, what happens? You switch off this transformer, you start the generator, and you supply from the decentralized generator all those sensitive consumers, and maybe also some other consumers in this local grid. Since all these grids are connected through transformers, they transform the voltage from one voltage level to the other one, 
This is the final structure. So we have the overlaying 400 kV grid, the European transport grid, and from this grid, we have this 110 kV, this is sub-regional sub-distribution, sub-transmission. And from there you have the medium voltage and low voltage grids. This is to show how the overall 400 kV network in Europe is made up. We see here Austria and you see we have a lot of lines bringing energy forth and back and tra transporting the electrical energy from one side of Austria to the other one. For example, the wind can be transported here to the west, or the hydropower trans can transport it from Tyrol to the east. But also this grid is, uh, can supply energy exchange between the neighboring countries. For example, from Germany, we can import electricity and electrical power, and we can send the electrical power on into Italy. So this is the interconnected European KV system, which is very, very safe because it sits so tightly, so tightly interconnected. So this was the chapter about the electrical power system. I thank you very much. And if you have further interest, then please have a look into the deepening script.